So now defining the operators, equals, not equals, less than, so on, modulus, and division. So there's not a whole lot with this one, defining them. Well, one of the key things, of course, is that they are used in conditional statements. So let's just get rid of all this. If we had an if, if. And then we did something. Else we did something else. Well, well, whatever. The point is with the if, which actually hasn't even been taught, I don't think, is that, or at least not officially in the series as we go through, is that this needs to evaluate the true or false. The if else block of code determines the flow of control. The flow of control will either go to this line, line number, what is it, 14, or it will go to line number 16, depending on how this condition evaluates. And that condition is either going to be true or false. And you're rarely going to see actually just true or false written there. You're going to see some sort of an expression that evaluates to true or false. Uh, so, for example, if 3 equals 3. And you're not going to see anything like that either, obviously. But now we can move into what we're trying to look at here, which is the operators. And actually, that's a good point. Because in Java, that is the assignment operator. But I think what they're getting at here is is comparisons. So well, that's fun. That checks to see if that is that. And I think we better actually throw in some more realistic Boolean values. So let's go Boolean. Not Boolean, sorry. Um, int. Int i is assigned 3. And then int j, just to pick another variable name, is assigned 3. So now we can go if variable i is equal to variable j. If so, well, I guess the something would be. And something like that. So we run this, i and j are equal. They value it to be equal, so we will see that they are indeed equal. And now we can move into the other ones. On uh, not equals. Not equals in Java is this exclamation mark equals. So if they are not equal, we would print out. I suppose we would say up here. And here we would say something like that, right? Because if they are not, if i is not equal to j, this happens. And then this becomes a double negative if not not equal. In other words, if they are equal, we would jump down to that. So right now, um, does this evaluate to true? And I'll slow down with this, right? Does this evaluate to true? i not equal to j. Is i not equal to j? No. That evaluates to false. So we go down to the two are equal. Next one. Well, less than or greater than so on. Let's just do one of them. And in fact, let's make one of them bigger than the other. And let's go if i is less than j. Well, whatever, well, whatever. I don't imagine this is something you're going to watch again and again, again, except for the mod coming up. But yeah, you get how that's going to work. And we do have less than and equals, less than or equals to, and the opposite. So let's move on to what is a little bit different in division. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, I get why they got that there. So mod and divide. So let's do this. Let's just print out. 
7 divided by 3. So we're going to sout our, and we'll just do it right, 7 divided by 3. And let's not bother with any of this anymore. Or even this. 7 divided by 3. This is integer division because these will be seen as being integers. And the integer division cannot yield a decimal portion. So what we're going to get here is 2. Whereas, if we made these into real numbers, then we should get the remainder as well. Um, so to go back to integers, in fact, let, let's, let's declare these as integers or doubles to be absolutely certain. Have them as variables. So we're going to go int a, to change things up a little bit here, is 7, int b is 3. So these are definitely ints and uh, both ints. So that's going to, once again, give us just the integer part, the whole number part, which is 2. Because 7 divided by 3 gives you 2 and a remainder of 1, but we don't see the remainder with this integer division. We just see the whole number part. But fortunately, there's another way to get at an integer remainder. And that is the following. So we're going to go A modulus, which in Java is the percent symbol, B. So what that's going to do is give us the remainder. Right? I'm going to write this down that uh, the mod or modulus operator in Java yields the remainder of an division. So the remainder of 7 divided by 3 is 1, and that's what we will see here as the second line. And we'll just do one more example of modulus. So we're going to go int c is assigned, I don't know, 12. Then we're going to go int d is assigned, uh, how about 5? So 5 goes into 12, 2, with a remainder of 2. So that's not a very good one. Let's do, let's do uh, 7. So 7 goes into 12 just once with a remainder of 5. So if we go integer division, we're going to go sout c integer division d, we're just going to get 1. And then if we go c modulus division, in other words, remainder division d, we get the remainder, which is 5. So let's comment these out and run this program. And we should see two lines, one giving 1 and one giving five. So that is the whole number division of 12 by 7, and that is the remainder of 12 divided by 7. And that is those operators.